A very good morning to you all. Welcome to Sunrise Daily today. I'm Chamberlain Oso. Good morning from Abuja and Maupe Ogun Yusuf. And from Lagos, good morning. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Good morning, good morning and, welcome and welcome to the to program. program. I'm Ayo Makinde. Well, yes, indeed. So today we're just going to go right ahead and take a look at some of the dailies for you in just a moment. Let's start with the Guardian newspaper here today. World's Day for Poverty Eradication. Nigeria's hunger level, serious, ranks 103 out of 121 countries. Uh, quite a number of writers here. Four in ten Nigerians live below $2 daily. UN chief, CDD, task leaders on bending worsening poverty curve Guterres let us consign poverty to pages of history make poverty reduction key campaign issue PWDs urge Nigerians and then you see this one from NHRC food crisis has worsened hunger in Nigeria so it is a very uh, I mean as the paper put it serious uh, challenge that we've got to address here and given all of the uh, several other challenges we see concerning leakages the budget system oh uh, yeah the crude that's another big one right there uh, several reports that you get to see on a regular almost on a regular basis especially that one that the dailies did report about the ports, about 400 billion naira worth of goods rotting away at the ports. Can we afford those kind of scenarios if we need to address the issues, especially when we also say we, there's a lot of uh, a paucity of funds in the country. So we're grappling with so many things, but we need to be seen to be doing something to reflect at least uh, efforts or at least this particular challenge. We need to be seen mm -hmm. to be addressing these sort of challenges. If we're ranked 103 out mm -hmm. of 121 countries, mm -hmm. and then the effects, the impact of the flood, I'm not sure it has kicked in as of yet. It so, hasn't. So you can imagine if that does, it, hasn't. it will impact on this. You know that normally by, by this time we'll be nearing the end of the rainy season, and then after a while it's supposed to be the harvest uh, season, but when you have floods that have swept away, rice you know, mills, farms, you, you know that, 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 that that's certainly going to have its impact. So by the time uh, it's Christmas, what, what you'll be saying won't just be uh, the, the the effect of the period, which what normally in Nigeria we see prices go up, especially of foodstuff mm -hmm. uh, during Christmas. It will also be as a result of uh, uh, the flooding that we have seen take over many farms. Oh boy. Sometimes you just wonder. Well, yeah, there's also this again, rivers ranks first in fiscal performance. Yes, budget, budget uh, oh. did a state of the states, and uh, rivers was number one on that list. Um, sadly, uh, there are those who were at the very bottom, and it was interesting uh, to see which state was at the very bottom. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> you might want to take a look at the state of the state put, put together by budget, uh, which caused some controversy over the weekend as well. <laughs> New Telegraph is the paper I'm looking at for you this morning, and they have this. Uh, they're focusing largely on flooding. Yes, that's the lead story there. 
FG mouth bilateral talks with Cameroon on periodic opening of Lagdo Dam. Uh, that's what you find on the front page. And I'm just wondering, did, when you say FG malls, it, it means they're thinking. They're still thinking about it? I mean, look at the effect of this. It says over 500 lives lost, 90,000 houses damaged. 14, what am I saying? 140,000 hectares of farmland destroyed. IDPs rise to 15,002 in Delta. Clark accuses federal government of nonchalance towards Niger Delta. Declare national emergency in Bielsa. Others, Diri urges federal government. And the headlines, this says federal government malls. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, you cannot still be thinking about it. Is it that you have done, you've started taking the steps? You, you still cannot. So I've even acted a long time ago. You know, ago. a long time ago, because the, the floods don't just happen. You know, we yeah. have a prediction that says this is what is going to happen. As a result of that, you would have been asking, you know, should we start the conversation? You should have started the conversation. Should we be predicting a flood? If that is what your, you know, Nine Met and Nigeria Hydrological Services are mm -hmm. predicting, uh, you know, we should have seen some proactivity. This is certainly a lot of reactivity. Uh, lots of communities have now been affected. 500 lives lost because rain fell. Well, page two is where you find details. You also have a number of other stories here. First Republic leaders more committed to Nigeria's unity than present ones. That's uh, from AIA, blames Nigeria's problem on primordial ideas, says nation can't make progress with current constitution. Uh, some politics also on the front page, 2023, Tinubu to face Northern Elders, leaders, fault at Tico's campaign declaration. What I told Northern audience, uh, that's from Atiko, uh, a certain part of the clip which he, uh, you know, made an address in who has been making the rounds and I guess maybe there's some clarification on pages 2, 6 and 28. OB promises Marshall Plan Educational System. Uh, that is also there for you. Kanu Malamil earn international mockery for Nigeria. So that story which broke on Friday, the appeal court, uh, you know, acquitting uh, Namdi Kanu uh, that story also has its own reaction because we saw the AGF also say that, you know, he's been acquitted but he's not been discharged also. No. Uh, pages 7 and 8. Ehe Dio had distanced itself from purported letter to AGF, urges security agencies to probe those behind forgery. Uh, some letter was making the rounds that uh, he was asking the federal government not to release Namdi Kanu uh, yeah. to the southeast. But looks like uh, he says that letter is a forgery. You also see this story. NBS, as a National Bureau of Statistics, banks' workforce shrinks by 10.15% to 10,520 in two years. Talk about the Jackpa syndrome. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, yes, it, the, it's hitting the banks hard. Um, and I think it's also hitting a lot of other sectors yeah. uh, really hard as well. Uh, page three is where you get to see the story. IGR, Lagos tops the statistic states FCT grows 1.9 trillion naira. Let's leave it there for New Telegraph this morning. Uh, well, uh, that story about you know the state of the states, I mean, going by what you just said now, on the one hand, Rivers is topping the list, on the other hand, Lagos is topping the list, but there are so many of those lists you may want to take a look at it yourself. Nigerian Tribune uh, this morning leads with something similar to, you know, what we started with with the Guardian newspaper. Flood, 603 Nigerians killed, 2.504 million affected so far, 82,053 82, houses, 332,327 farmlands totally damaged. That story is on page eight. And no wonder you know, food uh, security is an issue on the front pages as well. Of course, politics is uh, awash on various uh, parts of the page. Uh, Atiku Tinubu's teams at each other's throats over Kaduna statements. And 
Oyebanji is sworn in as executive governor, promises prosperity. A number of people uh, were there at the meeting and several other issues you will find quite interesting this morning on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. And from there, let's take a very quick look at a Daily Trust newspaper. And Daily Trust newspaper leads with something pretty interesting. Um, this is the big story here. Or also a report, despite white paper, asked agencies get 226 billion naira in 2023 budget. That's it for you. And uh, you'll find what seems, you know, a graphics spread providing information on who got what. And you find here, National Salaries and Wages Commission to be merged with Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission. Uh, in the 2023 proposed budget allocations to some of the agencies, uh, the Salaries and Wages Commission is to get 988 million naira. There is also this one, Infrastructure Concession and Regulatory Commission domiciled in the Bureau of Public Enterprises is going away with 1.4 billion naira. And you'll also find Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, ICPC and Code of Conduct Bureau are going away with 59.5 billion naira. There's quite a lot of information uh, more information from the graphic spread well let's leave it there as uh, we've gotten that information about uh, you know agencies that have been uh, shed due to the honorary reporter getting uh, some funds from the 2023 budget whether or not that report has been acted upon i guess that's another question to ask <laughs> uh, but indeed there's been some action mm. uh, according to reports so why some come there, get... agencies are getting money is what we don't know. Could it, could it be that some agencies haven't gotten the memo? Maybe. Because, and we'll interrogate the story. <laughs> well, of course, we'll have sufficient time in the near future to do that. Let's go above the nameplate now to uh, see some more stories. There's this one from Zamfara. There's a lot happening in Zamfara, by the way. We're going to be talking about some of uh, you know the talking points but this one reads thus Knox Trail closure of broadcast stations by Zamfara government and lastly 25% persons killed in Kaduna Bauchi road crashes let's leave it there now for the Daily Trust newspaper All right, take a look at Vanguard newspaper next. 2023, Atiku, Tinubu hurl verbal missiles as each other. Atiku belongs to a dying breed of ethnic regional politicians, Tinubu. And then you see Tinubu, greatest threat to national cohesion, democratic norms, ascribed to Atiku, as Tinubu meets northern leaders today. So that's the big one for politics on the front page here today. Uh, just to the beneath that lay story, 603 dead, 2 million displaced as flood wreaks havoc in Delta, Bielsa, Rivers, others. So that is a huge one here today. Mm. Um, That's a, a, a significant increase from the 500 we saw earlier. I mean, when you have an additional 103 people. Uh, dying as a result of floods. Uh, that's a significant update. I mean, it's 103. One person is bad enough. But you now have 103 people more who have lost their lives. And I think we have a number of other papers corroborating that particular yeah. number. And unfortunately, over the years, the kind of response we've given to this always you know, leaves a lot to be desired because usually people are never able to you know, recover from this kind of scenarios and um, well, there you go. Yeah, you also see PW flags of campaign, October 25. But uh, oh yeah, look at the back page. Wow, quite a lot on the back page here today. If we have it, uh, Liverpool one, Man City zero. Salah's superb finish earns Red win in Anfield thriller. And then a classical, Basel Real Madrid three, Barcelona one. So. Um, Real Madrid East past Barca in classical win to go top of La Liga. And then, wow, and Deontay Wilder 
gets it done inside one round with a KO. What a scenario. So sports has a lot packed there today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What a weekend it was. Yeah, what has Vanguard Always today? for the men. Well, uh, maybe not just men. Exciting. Sports lovers in mm -hmm. general. The Abuja Inquirer, uh, looking at what's happening right here in the FCT. Federal government warns of more flooding. Says 603 Nigerians have died. Anambra Delta, three others still at risk. Residents of flood... <laughs> flood-prone areas for evacuation to send delegation into Cameroon over Lagdo Dam. So that is on the front page of the Abuja Inquirer for you. You also see um, on the front page, Namdi Kano Uzodimma, not I, should be afraid, attributed to Ihe Dioha. So that's what the Abuja Inquirer has on the front page for you. They also have sports on the back page. Oh. Arsenal, four points clear as a win against Leeds. This is certainly Arsenal season. Uh, it seems oh. that you, you can't so take far, it. So far, so good. You can't take it. Please, let them bask in it. You All can't right. take it away from them this time. You, you show you there. Uh, Bukayo Saka's <laughs> 35th minute strike from a tight angle proved to be the difference at Ellen Road, so that is also there. Uh, Salah's cause to inflict defeat on City. A number of other stories they have for you. Quite an interesting read yeah. on the back page of Abuja Inquirer this morning. Let's leave it there for the paper. This Nigeria is next, and it is also talking about flooding uh, this morning. It's front page lead story, floods of sorrow as the lead of this Nigeria newspaper today. Over 2.5 million persons displaced, 603 deaths. Certainly worrisome indeed, Malboy. 82,538 houses submerged, says FG. Nigerians groan from devastating effects, seek government's assistance to check misery. And all of that is packed on page Two, uh, pages two and four of this Nigeria newspaper today. Uh, of course, you see uh, right beside the picture of uh, on the front page, Oyebanji takes over as equity governor, freezes bank accounts, appoints SSG. Story is on page uh, four. And right under that one, under the, the picture, Nigeria generates 1.8 trillion naira excuse me, IGR in 2021, that's ascribed to NBS. Lagos, Abuja, Rivers, lead other states. Stories on page 20 of the paper this morning. And of course, you find right beside the nameplate, Serap tells Buhari to publish names of oil thieves, threatens legal action. Yes, a Serap, and that's this Nigeria. And uh, we look forward to hearing the outcome of that. Oh, well. It's a, court it's a case. big talking point. It's a it's a court uh, besides case. the state of the states from mm. budget, that was also a huge talking point over the weekend. But let's turn our attention to the Nigerian Tribune this morning. The Nigerian Tribune. I, I hope we haven't uh, gone through that one yet. We have. All right. So uh, let's take a look at uh, something else this morning uh, as we look at leadership newspaper. Uh, leadership newspaper has been following up on uh, you know the 1993. Uh, mysterious disappearance of uh, the journalist Bagauda Kalto and this this latest one on it and it's the big story from leadership it says uh, Bagauda Kalto America's grave silence worries Nigerian media it's a page four read let's take a look at uh, the riders this morning the ex-US envoy Russell Hanks fingered in Derba hotel bombing Kalto's death for one month, U.S. Embassy has refused to respond to leadership's queries. Kalto's wife, NUJ, others insist American government, federal government, must speak out. Well, it's a good thing that at least uh, some journalists are providing some consistency in terms of following up on this report and demanding some form of accountability. Let's see how that goes eventually. As we go uh, above the nameplate now to see this one, 2023, 
uh, sorry, beneath the nameplate and just above the big story, 2023, APC, Tinubu, others, rap article over North's choice comet. Oh, last is certainly yet to be heard about that one. And uh, let's see how um, regulatory agencies respond, particularly in the light of uh, you know, the repeated admonitions and warnings about you know, um, the language shaping campaigns ahead of the 2023 election. But that's it for that as we go above the nameplates to do a check on just um, two more stories before we exit leadership. NNNP advises against endorsing any candidate for North's interest. Well, I wonder if that's convenient or is born of any form of altruism. It's just, you know, a poser there. And lastly, 2023, editors, security chiefs, election managers examine political landscape. That one is a page six read from Leadership Newspaper. And that's it for Leadership this morning. Well, take a look at Daily Trust next. Our senior report, despite white paper, asked... Oh, okay. Uh, I think we looked at this one before, have we? Yes, we have. <laughs> Okay, yes, it just can. looks quite interesting then. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and um, uh, take a look at the very next one that we've got for you here this morning, which is the Guardian newspaper then. And then you see Nigeria's, uh-oh, okay, well, okay, I guess that's it as well. We've done that. Also. So there you go, guys. That ends it up with a look at some of the dailies here today. We will be back in just a moment. Join us again. A ceremony organized by the Zamfara State People's Democratic Party, PDP, to receive the campaigns from other political parties, despite the order by the state government banning all political gatherings in the state, turns violent as supporters of the PDP and those of the APC clashed, leading to the death of one person with 18 others injured. The Zamfara State chapter of the People's Democratic Party denies violating any law as the state's deputy chairman insists that the state government lacks the power to stop political campaigns sanctioned by INEC in line with the guidelines of the 2022 Electoral Act and the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What we did today has been happening every day consistently, especially in the government office in Zamfara. Every day we have the campaigns coming to the governor and we see them on television and, uh, you know, so, I mean, we, we have never done any activity because the government has told us particularly there is no political activity before the official deadline of INEC, which was on October of October. The Zamfara state government blames the PDP for violating the ban on political gatherings, which was recently announced by the government to curb the resurgence of terrorist activities in the state. The state's deputy governor, who visited the injured persons at the state specialist hospital, alleges that the People's Democratic Party members had attacked 18 environmental sanitation workers who were performing their duties at the Guso GRA during the major opposition party political activity in the state, in spite of the ban on political activities to further notice. About 18 people were there now on the bed. We have said the government has already announced no any political rally, no any political gathering within the state. 
till after the situation is okay, till after the station is calm. But to my surprise, one of the aspirants on the People's Democratic Party has made, has gone beyond, and he has shown that he's above the law. As the blame game continues, the Zamfara state government has ordered the closure of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA Guso, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Pride FM, Ganji FM, Ganji TV, Al Uma TV, for covering the PDP event in the state. Welcome back. So those two gentlemen join us next. Uh, we've got uh, Yusuf Idris, who is the Publicity Secretary for the APC in Zamfara State, as well as Mukhtar Luga, the Deputy Chairman of Zamfara State PDP. He's also a member of the Presidential Campaign Council of Tiku and Okoa. Gentlemen, good morning and thank you for joining us on the program today. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Luga, the Deputy Chairman of the PDP in Zamfara. Well, some of the accusations there is that um, there was supposed to be an agreement wherein everybody, she feels so would hold on until the environment calms down before the campaigns begin. But they say you stoked the fire. Perhaps we could start from you. Tell us what transpired from your own perspective, Mr. Luga. Uh, well, uh, good morning, um, all. Good morning, Nigerians. Uh, what I want to state categorically here yeah, is that... Uh, I'm not aware of any such agreements. What I'm aware is uh, our party and the other political parties were called by the security agencies uh, under the leadership of the police commissioner of the Forest State, and we signed a peace accord. The peace accord I actually is actually uh, essentially uh, for us to agree to conduct uh, our electioneering campaign and even elections in a free and fair and peaceful manner. That was what was signed. Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, of any accord that we have entered that uh, suspends uh, campaigns. Uh, so I, I really don't know what uh, what accord um, uh, the government is trying to say. We are we are a law-abiding uh, party. We have always conducted ourselves with decorum. Uh, we have everything to lose if uh, if, if there's uh, if, there, if if there's a violence in Zafar. So. Uh, basically, there wasn't any peace accord. There wasn't such an agreement. Okay, so tell us then, what caused the clash which led to the death of one person and 18 others injured? Well, uh, I, 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 I have had this information and uh, I, I don't have any evidence. I have not seen any evidence to support that there was that number of casualty. Uh, but what I know is that um, the uh, APC uh, and the government uh, tried to stop uh, what uh, our constitutional rights uh, to launch our campaign uh, and to associate freely as uh, enshrined in the Constitution of Nigeria. Uh, so basically, uh, the, 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 we, 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 uh, we tried to uh, maintain peace and order. Uh, so basically, there were skirmishes, probably, uh, but um, we, 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 were, we, were, we were coerced and we were told that we cannot help, we cannot hold uh, legitimate campaigns. Even our candidate, uh, our gubernatorial candidate, was asked not to come into Zamfara. Uh, and we felt that was an affront to our constitutional right, and that was an affront to the uh, rules as uh, given by INEC uh, for the commencement of uh, the gubernatorial campaign. Uh, so that was what happened. I, I don't know anything, uh, I don't know how, where the government addressed its power to stop uh, this free association which was uh, which is fully in line with the annual calendar uh, for the commencement of of gubernatorial campaign. So, All right. so, so basically, okay. Let, let, let's uh, go to Mr. Idris because I mean uh, we have heard your perspective of what transpired, and then um, the APC in the state, uh, Mr. Idris, you can go ahead and tell us them because they say uh, the party, the APC, is trying to stifle their uh, constitutional right to go ahead and campaign. What is your own account of what transpired? 
Well, good morning, Nigerians. Uh, the issue is quite simple. Uh, as we are all aware, we need to first of all know the genesis of all the matter. There was an, still an executive order uh, uh, signed by the governor, but by the all enforcement law agencies in the state, which banned all political gatherings to enable the security agencies uh, carried uh, some urgency for a short period of time of at least two weeks to enable them uh, maybe chase out all the bandits. As we are aware, we are faced with uh, bombardment by the Nigeria airport in some of the uh, hideout of the bandits in the state in recent times, which caused uh, for a fallout of many of the bandits who are now on reprisal attacks in our different communities, which led to the closure of almost about uh, three to five roads in the state. Which led uh, the governor, his uh, major constitutional provision is to protect lives and properties of the citizens, which by this, uh, he ordered that all the political campaigns and rallies as is being agreed by the state's uh, security council should be suspended for at least 10 days to two weeks, which we have about uh, 19 gubernatorial candidates. Uh, we have uh, 19 parties who are aspiring in different uh, political positions in the state, which all of them abide by the, the PDP. Uh, maybe we don't know what it uh, means, and uh, they decided not to abide by the order because uh, the lives and the properties of the citizens is far better ahead of all what we are going to campaign for. And I think... As they are aware, as the, P, as the All Progressive Congress in the state, we are ready, we want to go and campaign, look at crimes of the state to combat for uh, both to our candidates at all levels. So I don't think it's a, something to raise alarm or to cry fall uh, so quickly like this. When something matters uh, of security, I think as the reasonable leaders who want to be a leaders of tomorrow, and uh, he is aspiring to become a governor. And why should he, uh, there is a uh, uh, supervised open shooting on the innocent citizen, which kills one person and many others are still hospitalized. Uh, Mr. Idris, just a moment, before you go further, um, when you say it was just the PDP that decided not to comply, does that then justify the clash? Or are you saying it was terrorists that attacked the... PDP members who were campaigning? They were not attacked. All the people shot uh, our members. Uh, the APC members were shot by, by, by their supporters. By who it's supporters? The PDP one. supporters? The APC supporters were shot by the PDP talks who were brought in. I believe maybe some of them are even bandits because they are wearing camouflage uniforms. So uh, how, how did you know that they were PDP thugs? Because, because, because they, they, have, they have shot them. What really happened at the scenes of the incident? You know, in Zambara State, we have a program called Yeko, where most of the youth are engaged uh, in uh, weekly sanitation. They are taking their, uh, their work at the GRA site, where the PDP are doing their, uh, they are doing their rally, their illegal rally. So when, when their supporters are passing, we don't know why they got the right to use guns and what have you to be shooting people spiritually. And I'm, as I'm talking to you now, right now, the, the, the affected victims are still hospitalized at the Arima Mokura Special Hospital. Wait, how, you know, how, how many people and, and it, are injured in this matter? How, uh, 19 people sustained various degrees of injuries. Gunshots, different gunshots. One person dead. I know their members. Our members, they shot them. All right. Well, um, Mr. Luga, you've heard uh, his submissions first. Is that, um, uh, that the, the, Mr. Luga, this is for you now. First, he says that um, that executive order, you were saying you were not aware of any agreement or any such thing, but how about an executive order which the government did say, look, in consideration of the security challenge that the state is facing, so they thought that for about 10 days, he says all the political parties, all other political parties thought it reasonable to hold on until after that, such that the security agencies may clear the way 
then campaigns can begin. But he says the PDP decided not to for whatever reason, and perhaps your members equally uh, attacked their members. Is that correct? Uh, that is absolutely false. Um, and uh, I sit here and I watch uh, my, <laughs> my uh, Idris speak, and I, I'm really saddened, honestly. I think there's a lot of confusion uh, to what the role of uh, the role of gov uh, government, the state government, is in this matter. Uh, I don't think uh, there's any law from anybody, including the governor himself, that can override the, the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, the INA is an independent National Electoral Commission. Is not uh, cannot uh, can you cannot make rules on behalf of INA. The timetable, that document, the timetable of INEC, you cannot change as an individual. It will have to go back to INEC for INEC to look at it on its merit and change it. So this uh, this uh, this document, the timetable, was issued over a year ago. So it, uh, the, it, the time for campaign was specifically spelled out in that document and it started on the 12th. We didn't campaign before now. We never said there was a time the governor issued this order and we respected it. If you go around now, if you go around this all now, PDP has no one single billboard because the government wouldn't allow it to put one, bill, one billboard. Uh, so my brother, what I want Idris to understand, uh, there's a difference between executive order, there's a difference between the rights that are right in the constitution, there is a difference between what was issued and also INA guidelines. Where the state government got it wrong was actually to think that they can actually uh, interfere or change what is, uh, what is, what is constitutionally uh, our rights as guaranteed by INA under the uh, amended 1999 constitution. So what the state government probably will have done was to write to INA and request that the timetable be adjusted for reasons as stated. You cannot. Uh, okay, so Mr. Luga, whilst, whilst no one is, uh, is disputing uh, the, the, the timetable of INEC, uh, there are questions as to whether or not yeah. a state can look at its own exigent, exigences and, you know, say, look, for the sake of, I mean, assuming there was a state of emergency declared, you're not going to be saying, you know, oh, look at INEX timetable, for instance. Uh, if lives and, and property are at stake or are at risk, uh, will you go ahead with a campaign rally as a result of that? That's one question. The other will be, uh, as we speak, 18 people are currently hospitalized, accused to have been, uh, or alleged to have been shot at by members of your own political party or by people who attended the said rally. Do you want to respond to that? Are you attending rallies or organizing rallies with people who have guns on them? Uh, first of all, I want to categorically state that at no point did the PDP engage or hire anybody uh, that uh, is armed in their campaigns. It is not our nature, we don't do that. Uh, secondly, I understand what you're saying about the exigencies, but even exigencies, no matter what has procedures, we have the police commissioner, we have the director of SSS. I mean, the state government cannot in a large field, just issue statements because the situation uh, that they feel, they feel threatened by this friend that has been guided by the PDP. So there are procedures to do everything. We don't, we are no abiding if we had received uh, if we had received order from the relevant security agencies, we would have stayed back uh, and not even come into town. But this is our gubernatorial candidate coming in to launch his campaign. And then somebody is saying that, no, 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 you cannot do that. All this issue about security is being highly politicized by the APC. The way they make it appear today, they will say the country, uh, the, the state is, is secure. Just some days ago, they announced that they are opening schools, four to five schools were open as opera because they said the security situation as well uh, has improved. Mm -hmm. Just by next week, because our candidate is coming into residence, and you say that security situation, and you, and you issue a unilateral order that also contradicts 
the provision of the constitution that also makes INEX timetable look ridiculous. Uh, okay, if so if, what, if I may, I just want you to, you have denied that, you know, your members had any guns or that you didn't hire any thugs. Do you want to explain what happened then uh, when eventually the people, the environmental workers, in quote, uh, who came to tell you that you couldn't have your rally as you were having it, what transpired? How come a number of them ended up in hospital? What transpired? Well, first of all, I seriously doubt the number they're talking about, but it doesn't matter. Even if it's one person, not one person should be hurt in the course of any political. This is our stand. Now, secondly, uh, the, 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 the APC tried all they can to prevent uh, our, our candidate from coming into town. He was attacked twice on the way uh, by, by their thoughts, and then uh, basically our office was attacked and ransacked by them. Uh, they, 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 they hired people who came there and fired shots. They destroyed our campaign vehicles. And uh, all these things they are saying is from is, is, is the immunization in their head. And let me state categorically here. I have, we have incriminating videos that actually show this violence being perpetrated by the, by the APC and their agents. I am exercising document until I have shown it to the security, then we are ready to release it. So whatever Yusuf is going to say today, uh, we are going to hold it against him. They started this, and they will continue to do this because they don't have a upper hand in the election. If we go to elections to the post today, AP, uh, PDP will win elections. This I can assure you. Mm. Well, well, let me quickly um, ask Mr. Idris, because uh, even though I still have questions for you, Mr. Luga, uh, but let me come to Mr. Idris. Uh, you have talked about the issue of security exigencies uh, causing you to... Uh, you know, causing the governor to issue an executive order asking that rallies not hold. Uh, but this is without recourse to talking to the political parties themselves. And also this is coming in spite of your alleged high-handedness in terms of how you have dealt with other political parties, particularly the PDP, that you have prevented them from campaigning. And one will raise very strong eyebrows as to if you have problems you know, with security in the hinterland, uh, would you have problems with security in the GRA of Zamfara? Uh, there, there are big questions in that regard. I mean, how bad can it be uh, that if someone were doing a rally, say, at a hotel, at a hotel uh, in GRA, they cannot hold it peacefully? Um, as you have uh, asked your question, let me speak uh, very loud and clear that uh, I respect uh, the deputy chairman of the PDP, but I was surprised at his age and the, his recognition in the society to bring himself so low because of the political issue, to be telling Nigerians and the entire world something different from what is, what is, what is actually happened. And the issue is quite clear. Any reasonable citizen must consider the existences were experience of security now. And following the bombardment by the Nigerian Air Force, it's to the glaring of everybody in this country that the Nigerian Air Force has carried out a very successful bombardment on some of the bandit camps in the state, which caused now the bandits are taking reprisals and the things become a serious concern to the government which led to all the executive orders signed by the governor, and he is in uh, connections with all the security chiefs in the state. It's not a, as an individual decision of the governor. It's the security council in the state that sat down and made all the, the, the decisions. The roads were closed. They closed roads from Maiti, Anka, Gumi, to Bukwim. They closed a road from uh, the colony, uh, Berlinturu, uh, uh, Berlinturu to Koko. They closed a road from Wanke, Bawaganga, Tanjibga, Kolon to Bilbis. They closed a road linking from Busot to Magami, Magami to Tangulibi, Tangulibi to Tansado. Is this for PDP alone? 
So why else are, <laughs> we're, not, we're not disputing this? The question is whether there's been an engagement with the political parties. Don't forget, this is not the first time we're seeing matters of exigencies come up. Uh, during the period of COVID as well, uh, INEC had to meet with political parties, even government had to meet with political parties when uh, you know, political, the political season, electoral off-cycle season was, was agog in a number of states to speak with them about how they should go about con conducting campaigns for the safety of lives uh, uh, across, um, across the, the states that were affected or that were going to be holding elections. Did your principal seek the cooperation of political parties, explaining the situation to them and, and telling them why, you know, uh, uh, why they couldn't hold their rallies or perhaps exploring other ways of campaigning given that elections are going to happen in Zamfara and also given the, you know, the security exigencies which, which you have highlighted? Unity, the government has issued a statement before even the time of their campaign. And they are aware of all this. When the political parties comply, a former governor coming in the state trying to plan of his campaign will have to shift, they have to shut it because of the, of, of the information he got. Gov former governor Abdul Aziz Yari landed at Sokote Airport, proceeded to his hometown, but already uh, realizing this is the, what is on ground. He shifted all this. Senator Kabiru Garbo Marapo was in town trying to plug up his campaign. And as an envoy, there is ADP candidates and what have you. They have shifted all their campaigns. This is to declare it. The, the government has made an announcement. Mm. The decision of the state, the executive, uh, the, the state security council is made known but to all political parties through media houses, different media houses even with the publications in some of the national media. The announcement is not equivalent to an engagement. I mean, there are two different questions I'm asking you. But you haven't addressed the issue. You haven't addressed the issue of uh, the, the, the location. If they were holding a rally uh, is the, at the heart of the GRA, uh, right there in Guso, in Zamfara. Uh, was the Air Force also bombing that place? Was, was, is this particular ban which you have, is it in every area of Zamfara, including the city, one, and then two, you've not responded to the fact that PDP has not been able to put up any billboards. I mean, should that also affect them being able to campaign um, on billboards? That, that, that is not my responsibility. I am the publicity secretary of the All Progressive Congress. I'm not, I'm not in the government. I'm a party leader. So they know the procedures to, on how to fix their billboards, and they know the procedures on all what to do. So it's not my, it's not, it's not my responsibility. What I'm trying to, I'm speaking as an APC executive in the state. I'm not speaking for the government itself. I'm speaking because of the All Progressive Congress matters that involve in the casualties recorded yeah, by yeah, our Mr. members. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Idris, he and says, the GIA, the GIA. Just he says that uh, it was the APC thugs that attacked their party whilst they went to campaign, because it will look as if you're justifying that attack, because he was wondering that, look, it wasn't uh, terrorists that attacked them. So it's one thing for them to have said, well, the laws are there. And besides, the state government five days ago prior to that announced the reopening of 45 schools out of the 75 that were shot. And so he says, look, if the government found it necessary to reopen 45 schools, it means it was safe. So isn't that contradictory when you then say it wasn't safe for them to go on campaign? Look. I, I, it's laughable something for once to say the government opened schools, announced the opening of the school last week. You understand? And now the issue of insecurity is, is, is changing. It's not unique in, only in Zamfara State. You understand? But the issue, the Zamfara State is like the epicenter of all this crisis of mandatory. Things are changing day in, day out. Well, we have recorded, I'm coming, listen to me, please. We have recorded a blockage of Gusot and Ferrot about three times in a day after the announcement of opening the schools. You understand? 
We have recorded attack in Bukwim local government, in, Basa, in, uh, in Zugu, and other places, which were affected. And he is saying the GRA, the GRA, the people who are coming for the campaign, are they not coming from the various local governments? Are yeah, they well, well, Mr. The Idris, you, you said a while ago that it is not your responsibility to address certain things that is up to the state government. Now, if the state government announced yes. the reopening of schools, is it now your responsibility to say, no, it is not safe because of what you highlighted and so they cannot campaign? Come okay. again. I know you heard me. No, I don't hear you. Well, you said a moment ago that it was not your responsibility, the party's responsibility, to decide where the PDP will put their billboards or not. And now... Yes. Yes. You're saying that it is not safe that things have changed for them to campaign because you witnessed one or two things in somewhere or someplace. But the government hasn't announced anything contrary. So are you taking responsibility now that it's not safe for them to campaign, even though you're not the government? I, as an APC member, and we have accepted that the environment for the period is not safe. That is why we have complied. We have our candidates who want to go and campaign. We have our schedule. To start. We have even started making, uh, uh, making campaigns in some of the uh, what we did with the South that, State Capital. That's besides... We have, we have to comply. Okay, so has the state government made any contrary announcements concerning the safety of reopening 45 schools? The government announced even the closure of the schools in all the areas I have mentioned earlier. I the heard you previously. I'm asking passed. you now, ever since that announcement that 45 schools will reopen in Zamfara, which means it's safe, has the state government made any further announcement saying it is no longer safe, since you say things have changed? The government even, 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 uh, even announced the entire shutdown of about three local governments. No, that's not my question. Where the schools were, I, I'm coming. Where the school were initially announced the, the, the opening of the schools. You understand? And now three local governments, Gumi, Bukuyum, and Anka, were totally shut down. You understand? Because of the issue now. Ms. Idris, the think. question is, ever since the government announced reopening of 45 schools, you say things are not yeah. safe. Have they cancelled that announcement? The government, how, how will they now go to the school despite the closure I mean, of the road and the, and the local government, is, and the local government, three local government? The place is not safe now. Mr. Idris, has the government made any contrary announcement saying those fortified schools can no longer open because it is not safe? Yes or no? He... He announced the closure of the three local governments, not even to say about the private schools. Okay, so you, 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 want, you want to respond to whether or not they've cancelled that announcement because there's no such announcement. They've not announced that 45 schools can no longer open because it is not safe. So, uh, well, if, well, why, he well, categorically, well, hang on, he categorically accused your party of sending thugs to attack them. So, are those thugs taking laws into their hands now, because he said it's your party members who took laws into their hands to attack them, and not security agencies telling them you cannot campaign because it's not safe. There are two different things there. See, the issue of attack, if our party members attack them, I expect their party members to sustain various degrees of injury, you understand, or even to be killed. If our party members were attacked, sustain injuries, and one person lost his life, if it is our party members that attack them, how do you expect that someone who attacks you and also to sustain injury and sustain gunshots? All right, let, let, let's bring in Mr. No, Luga. Think... Okay, hang on, Mr. Idris. Uh, Mr. Luga, now you've, you've heard several perspectives from him uh, about what transpired. Now, those local governments that he said have been closed and that they have a lot of security challenges. First, is that the scenario at the moment in the state? It is absolutely not. Uh, let me tell you, let me put it categorically. APC uses security for its own convenience. 
I want to believe that whatever, whatever situation they can capitalize to get mileage uh, politically, they, will, they often use security as a weapon. Uh, we have the commissioner of police, we have the ESS, we apply. We didn't come into Zamfara illegally. We are Zamfara citizens. Nobody can tell us when to come and when to leave Zamfara. So basically, we applied. We told them this guy, uh, our gubernatorial candidate, is coming, and uh, this is what we are going to come in to do. And people are going to come from the local government. If the local governments are shut down, like Gumi Bukum that he likes mentioning, then we don't expect to see anybody coming from there. So, so we, it wasn't. It was a. It was. A, it was a gathering that was done inside a private house. It wasn't even done outside. It was done in the house of the gubernatorial candidate. It had a gate. The police sent six vehicles to supervise. There was no time that we got any contrary information. We didn't hold the rally. We came into town peacefully. We entered that compound. We did our activity. We departed. Nothing happened. They tried to smuggle people to, be, to, to ensure that that ceremony or that event did not hold. I have videos of their talks attacking our vehicles. I have videos of people shooting periodically. I, I, I am trying to get security clearance to release this material. I want Idris to, to really subpedal because certain things he's saying is going to base his credibility for a long time. I mean, and another thing that baffles me is the ruling party, APC, it's also the, the, the government of the day. So where do you get this, your people and my people from? I thought we're all supposed to be your people. The government should be aware that every single citizen of Zampara is, is, is the government's responsibility interest. Yeah, so well, I deserve protection from government. So why do I keep you hearing you, even the deputy governor was saying, our people, your people. Yeah, but, but, but he, Mr. Luga, what comes across from what he's saying is that your party is being insensitive to the environment in Zamfara, given the security challenge. And if they had announced that, look, let's, if it's just 10 days, because other political parties found it necessary, notwithstanding their rights to go ahead and campaign, but they thought, all right, if it's just 10 days, after all, we'll, we'll, we'll have campaigned up until, what, November, December, January. 10 days to them may be a pinch of, they can afford that. But... He is suggesting that your party should have seen the same scenario. Uh, first of all, I want to make it categorically clear that at no point did the APC or the government call us to sit on the right table to tell us, uh, look, let us suspend your campaign. That was not done. So there was no accord to that effect. Uh, secondly, we got the news on the pages of social media just like everybody else. Uh, we waited for the security to advise us accordingly. That, uh, that advice uh, stopping us did not come. I want to commend the security agencies because they are very thorough in what they're doing. They remain a political, a political in all this. Uh, another thing is, I told you, everything has a procedure, especially when you're talking about constitutional rights of parties and individuals. So you cannot get up and waive a constitutional right. This is what I'm saying. I don't have any issue. The, 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 the PDP wouldn't have had any issue if, the, if only the government or the APC had approached INEC and told them that this is, we need you to adjust this timetable accordingly. Because the issue here I keep saying is that if they manage, if, if the APC and the government of the day can suspend an entire, an entire uh, you know, calendar an entire, to say that no, we are going to discard this uh, INEC calendar and suspend, uh, you know, campaigns. I mean, what stops them from doing that when it's election time? So we need to understand the limitation of the powers of the state government. It does not stretch to the fact uh, of trampling our constitutional right. So we cannot do something with impunity. We don't have any issue. If the government feels that there is a security issue at stake, then they should follow the right channel. Just the other day, the same government came out and said they have, we, they, they have closed all the te television uh, and uh, radio stations in the state, including the NTA. Include, I mean, that is impunity. Yeah, we'll, we'll, has we'll come to that when we return in, in a moment, uh, Mr. Luga. But the thing is that um, 
uh, one person is reported to have died. And so he, at this point, cannot be talking about his rights or not. So those are considerations we also have to factor in. But give us a moment. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily on Channels Television. We're still following up on political violence recorded in Zampara State following a rally held by the People's Democratic Party. That's the opposition party in the state. And we've got two gentlemen who have been helping us uh, get uh, fuller perspectives on this conversation. We have with us the Publicity Secretary of the APC in Zampara, Mr. Yusuf Idris. And we'll also have the Deputy Chairman of the PDP in Zampara State, Mr. Muk. Luga. I'd like to come to you, uh, Mr. Idris, uh, APC Publicity Secretary, and I'm just going to briefly read that statement announcing the suspension of political parties in Zamfara State. And he said, uh, it says, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Zamfara, Dr. Billo uh, Matawale, has ordered the immediate suspension of all APC meetings and activities as part of his government's concern and sympathy in this direction, in the direction of violence now. He says APC political meetings. And is in response to the banning of political activities in the state, the PDP uh, acknowledged that the, that ban affects uh, APC meetings and not uh, PDP meetings or other meetings of other political parties. And I'd just like you to respond to that. Is this a statement credited to your state government? Mr. Idris, the question is for you. Mr. Idris, did you hear me? Mr. Idris, okay, I'll, I'll take the question again. I just read for you a statement uh, attributed to your state government announcing the suspension of political activities, and it announces the suspension of political activities affecting meetings of APC and not uh, the PDP or any other political party. And in response to that, the PDP uh, uh, says that uh, that announcement only affects political meetings of the All Progressives Congress and not the PDP or any other political party. So I'd like you to uh, confirm or deny that this statement was indeed issued by the state government. And if it was, um, why the um, you know, concern over the meeting held by the PDP um, if the announcement of the suspension only affects meetings of the All Progressives Congress? I'm afraid we have a, an issue with the audio there. Um, perhaps Chamberlain would like to. All right, let, let's see if we, could, if we could hear us from here. We don't know if that. Mr. Idris, are you there? Can, can you hear? We can see you, but can you hear us from here? OK, I think it's a general thing. Maybe he might have muted and uh, can't seem to have muted. Uh, but Mr. Luga, how about you? Are you there? Can you hear us? Just to check. Yes, I can hear, I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, OK. So, uh, Ms. Idris, you will have to then unmute such that uh, we can all hear you. But uh, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. OK. Ms. Idris, can you hear me? Yes. OK, because her question was that uh, the announcement suspended political meetings for the APC and as such does not necessarily affect the PDP. Um, let me tell you something. The constitution of the Nigeria is speaking about or he's uh, maybe explaining about. I think the essence of making a constitution in any uh, country is to ensure the protections of lives and property of the citizens. I don't think a constitution will guarantee or allow a place or create a place where uh, to, uh, to the, the PDP to be in possession of firearms or to be using 
killing innocent people and is the, pro, is the, is the provision of the Constitution. As you have, as you have said earlier, uh, the government is not violating or maybe contravening the Electoral Act or the Constitution. What I'm saying in my own view is very simple. For one to campaign for about four months, just a 10 days, that's two weeks, will make him not to win an election? Understand? But okay. the main issue is that, is the main issue is that, apart from the, they are among the 19 political parties standing an election in Zambara State. Uh -huh. I think if 18, I mean 18 political parties, if 17 will comply, I think it is irreasonable <laughs> for one political party. But, but no Mr. Mr. Idris, what uh, the point that Mr. Lugo was trying to make is whether or not 17 political parties complied, it doesn't invalidate the fact that they have a right, an executive order cannot. It's not superior to the Constitution and the Electoral Act, which also gives you that permission to associate freely and move freely in this context. Are you suggesting that because of the executive order, every other person, every other law falls flat on the face of the executive order? If the person is reasonable, and if the political party has its people at heart, you are going to lead at people. You are not going to lead at animals. No, when you cause the, the, a crisis, there are two different things. The law, is a, the law is a law. It's not about the emotions. The law is a law. So can't us from the even, point of the even, law. Even, even, even the law grant, even the law permits, or it is in the constitution. But when you see something that is going to affect the entire citizens of your state, or it will affect some parts of your citizens, as reasonable somebody, I think even without even the executive order from the government, as a party that yeah. want to... We, we hear you, we government. hear you on that, but it's besides the point of the law that we're trying I'm to not, ask. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying he, they, 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 they don't have a constitutional right to do, you understand? Yeah, because it, it, it comes across as though you're justifying the actions taken by the thugs, which he says they are political thugs from APC who attacked them. You seem to be justifying it, because I haven't heard you condemn them. No, he did not justify them. I, as he has claimed, he has all the videos. I wait, I'm ready for him to release the videos, because it's where the facts are going to reveal what really okay, happened. Okay, so before we bring him in as well, well if uh, part of the accusation is that the APC in Zanfara State, the government of the APC in the state, is being high-handed, if they were not, why will they go ahead and announce the shutting down of media houses? See, it's not the issue of our handling in terms of that direction. The, all the media houses are the ones who announce all the decisions taken by the security counties. You understand? They are now, after making all the announcements, you understand? And they enlighten the public about the dangers and the issues. Now they go ahead and collaborate and with the PDP to breach what they have even told the public. It's contradicting. In other words, the state yeah, government it's constitutes right. itself as the complainant and then the judge in the matter to unilaterally shut them down, even though there are laws and procedures required before that can happen? They not this, this government maybe because the, the the information reaching out there is not correct. So what is the correct? What thing? I read and what I see in some, I'm, I'm, I, let me tell you what I have seen and what I have read in the state that the state government sealed the media houses does not shut the media houses. It's only sealed the media houses. Messages if you see the they media don't house, the, they don't have the right. If you seal it, how did they yes, operate when it's sealed? The government doesn't have a right to shut I'm sorry, did you say the government the doesn't have a right? It's different from the shutting down. The government doesn't have a right to, to shut down the houses, it's only the MBT. What the government did was to seal the media houses, closing, not going in, not going out. I don't understand the point you're trying to make because if you seal the media house, you shut it down. If they can't go in and out, you stop the operations of that media house. And by the way, has the state, has the APC in Zamfara State communicated? Hang on, 
Has the state communicated to the government that they have no right to shut it down? I have seen many people. Has, your, has the party, yesterday. has the APC in the state communicated to the government that they have no right to shut media houses down, as you say? We are not saying what you are expecting. We are 100% with the governor's decision as the ruling party in the state. So why did you tell us that the government has no right to shut it down if you support what they did? I am not saying he doesn't have a right. He's not shutting down. He says because the issue of shutting down, meaning they are not going to operate, or he cancels their license and what have you. All right. It's been issued license by the NBC, not the state government. Okay, uh, not the government, did the government on the, 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 the okay, government gentlemen, on the land, we, the we, need to, the, we need to wrap this up now. Uh, Mr. Luga, given what has happened and what the current situation is now, what would you suggest, Mr. Luga, this is for you, what would you suggest should be done to ensure that not just APC and the PDP, all other parties can campaign peacefully because in spite of the rights that everybody has, has in the state, the person who is dead now cannot be talking about the rights and we cannot afford any injury, let alone the death of anyone as a result of political campaigns. Okay, we seem to have lost. Well, uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, I will, um, really uh, make the yes. Uh, my uh, abandoning of the rights uh, as enshrined in the Constitution. First of all, uh, he accused us of probably we should have suspended everything because land and properties are at stake. Uh, now, what I want, what I want him to understand is um, we don't believe there is any threat to land and property uh, by their own actions and by the announcement they have done to assure uh, that uh, that uh, Zamfara is peaceful. So it is at their convenience that they actually do that. Today, because if they feel threatened, they say a security. So I want to advise that the government stops the security as a political weapon against any party. That is number one. And what does it, what is we should understand about the constitution is that it guarantees rights to each and every citizen. It delineates responsibilities and limitations. And if they go against uh, the constitution, that is what really causes chaos. I am telling them now, whether they like it or not, we didn't cause the problem. They actually trampled on the rights of parties and individuals as a right, and that is what caused the breakdown of law and order. Uh, which he is saying now. I'm surprised that they don't make that connection at all. So he should understand. The only reason why Bobno Watawale is in government house now is because there's a constitution in place. He hasn't won an election, but a court declared him, and everybody agreed. All right, so, gentlemen. So I'm sorry. I'm, I, I need to make that clear, sir. Briefly, because so, so, we need to wind down. Uh, sir? Briefly, because we need to go. Okay, we are a law abiding party. We followed every procedure. We respect the law. We are trying to keep everything within the Constitution. What we don't agree and what we don't subscribe to is the issue of impunity that somebody feels he can trample on the rights of parties and individuals as enshrined in the Constitution of the Republic. We will continue to respect anything that connects our security, and uh, we will abide by all rules and regulations, and right. no amount of threat or intimidation will make our party uh, lose footing. All right, as then. We are certain that we're about to give as uh, for the dividends of democracy. Okay, Mr. Luga. Uh, and then, Mr. Idris, much as you say that uh, the party supports what the governor has done, but it also needs to be on record that uh, no governor is above the law in this country. So no government, no political party can coerce the media to report things the way they want. The media is carrying out a function enshrined in the Constitution, and that is the way it is. So if anything has got to happen, they have got to comply with the provisions stipulated in the 1999 Constitution, which is the ground norm. So no one should consider themselves above the law in this case, and that is the way it is. But I want to thank both of you for coming on today. Uh, Yusuf Idris is the Publicity Secretary for the APC in Zamfara State, as well as Mukhtar Luga, the Deputy Chairman of the PDP, as well as he's also a member 
of the Presidential Campaign Council of Atiku and Okawa. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on today. You're welcome, sir. All right, so we hope that security agencies will also be on top of the game and ensure that uh, they be seen to be obeying the law, no matter whose ox is God, because the campaigns are just warming up and we cannot afford these kind of scenarios where people lose their lives because of political parties or politicians. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Papers, not besides that, it doesn't even need paper for that anyway, because it is it is illegal, and he was act, were caught in the act. So the instrument of operation that he had is what was destroyed. So I, I think it's straightforward. Uh, whether you know whether that's the best is a different matter entirely. But was that uh, did he act in line with the rules of engagement? Yes, they did. Of course, reactions have trailed that uh, comment coming from the Chief of Defence Staff. And one of them is that of Mr. Femi Falano, who joins us this morning, the Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Good morning. Before we go into that, if you don't mind speaking to some of the issues just raised about political violence starting, um, well, taking place in Zamfara particularly that comment, you know, with which Chamberlain closed, that security agencies ought to be on top of their game to ensure that these things don't spiral out of control. One life has been lost and several people have been wounded already. Well, violence is part of the game as far as members of the political class are concerned because there's nobody to bring them to book. Really? Oh, yes. Not even the laws? The laws are there, but they are violated. They are breached by the ruling party, doesn't by that, the government of the day. Doesn't that make the security agencies culpable who are supposed to uphold the laws? For sure, but, you know, the enforcement of the law in a new colonial environment is anchored on what they call the body language of the president, or what does the government of the day want? I mean, you're talking of some far state. There are states where the situation is worse. Just I mean, just for instance, in River State, the government of the day has gone to court to say no other political party apart from PDP should contest election. The governor has rolled out policies that will make it impossible for other political parties apart from the ruling party to even stage rallies <laughs> and campaign. So, but what has the system put in place? By virtue of Section 145 of the Electoral 2022, it is the INEC that is empowered to prosecute electoral offenders and INEC has made the point abundantly clear that it doesn't have the, it's not in a position to add managing elections to the prosecution of electoral offenders. I think last year, July, the Senate passed the bill, Electoral Offenses Commission bill, up to now. The House of Reps has not passed it. And the elections are just a few months ago. Just a quick follow-up to that, sir. Um, when it comes to matters of 
insecurity you know state governors are quick to say that uh, they're not in control of the security apparatus that the commissioners of police report to the president but in this case now you know we find that security operatives were on ground uh, according to the PDP deputy chairman that was here and despite that the violence you know persisted and it spiraled out of the control to the extent that uh, one person died and the other persons were wounded so what happened in this case if you know the way that the security operatives looked on and the violence continued if you know the way the police is uh, funded you will know that majority of police commissions are the beck and call of the government apart from the payment of the salaries of police officers by the federal State governments are fully in, in charge in terms of providing logistics and payment of allowances to mobilize the police to carry out their functions. So in that kind of situation, it is difficult for the, to say that governors are not in charge. Hence, on the eve of elections, commissioners of police are transferred out of their commands in order to ensure that there is some facade of neutrality on the part of security forces. Well, the, another, perhaps in the same breath, still talking about Zamfara, is that comment, you know, that uh, the state government, well, the APC representative that, that we've interviewed just said, um, the, the state government didn't shut down the stations, it sealed off the stations. And of course, clearly my colleague was befuddled, what's the difference between sealing off so that no one can go out, no one can come in, and shutting down the, the, the organization so that they can't operate you know, at all. What in your opinion? I think whoever made that statement is playing on what? And whether it's sealing off or <laughs> closing down, you know, it's illegal. Fine, but so what should happen? What should, what kind of punitive measures should happen so that no other state government will be able to do that? The victims have to go to court. And this has continued because media houses, including yours, never challenge the authorities when your station is shut down and you have to go and pay millions of naira without anybody taking you to court. You have to pay illegal fines and you pay. So unless media houses are prepared to challenge authoritarian tactics and practices. It's going to continue. Well, perhaps, you know, you know, one of the arguments, talking about the oil theft thing, one of the arguments that I have also proffered is, look, if state governments can be as active as what Zamfara State did, couldn't these governments also have gotten ahead of these oil theft things? Yes, I mean, it's not under their authority and all of that, but there is the argument that, look, Maybe state governments should actually step up security as much as they can to protect facilities that, I mean, that, that, that frankly speaking, the country. The Constitution prescribes that governors are chief security officers of the state. And therefore, they must ensure that they put in place a mechanism to guarantee law and order. So you cannot, as a governor, throw up your hands in helplessly. No, you must take those steps allowed by law to guarantee law and order in your state without using the instrumentality of the state to harass your political opponents. Everybody must be treated equally under the law. And I'm afraid governors complain, oh, we've set up a security network and the operatives are not allowed to be our Again, I, I find it unacceptable. Where is the law? The law has to be applied evenly. I am aware that at least two state governments, two states in Nigeria, are allowed 
to acquire weapons for their security personnel, including AK-47 rifles. Not the police. No, not the police. Allowed the police. by the law in, by spite the government. Of, in spite of the firearms By act. the government. You apply to the president. You apply to the inspector general of police. And I know that those two states, I'm talking of Bono State and Katsina State, and in any case, you don't expect young men and women to combat terrorists with bows and arrows. What makes those two states different? What Nothing. stands them apart? Nothing, except that other states will have to insist that we be treated equally. You said they applied. Yes. And they were so granted. Under the law, you are required to apply. Okay. And they were granted the oh, license. Yes. Oh, yes. So I'm aware of that. Is that also to say that all other 34 states can apply? Of course. And should be granted. And, must be, and if they are not given, they must go to court. Okay. to challenge the discriminatory treatment on the part of the federal government. Okay. That is what democracy is all about. Okay. But don't go around complaining when you should fight for your right. Okay. Now, let's go to the oil theft you know, issue. Uh, one of the things that, that still worries me is why it seems like even state governors cannot, within the precincts of their you know, uh, territories, especially in the Niger Delta, do whatever they can to protect the oil facilities. The River State government, for instance, at some point, the governor went around and said, look, I've discovered this, I've discovered that, I've discovered that. And the River State is not the only oil producing you see, state in Nigeria. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the oil producing states or the governments of the oil producing states have generally left the issue of security, have abandoned it to the federal government. The security of the oil facilities? Generally, generally, what the state governments in the Niger Delta region are required to do is to mobilize the communities, the people, to defend the facilities. But you have a situation whereby all manners of task forces under a democratic government are set up manned by military personnel. And these guys operate as if they are not under the law. So the governors simply see this business as that of Abuja. Oh. And, so, and that is what is going on. But so what you are supposed to do under a democratic government is to acquire modern equipment to monitor all pipelines so that's the business of the federal government, right? Yes. At the local level, the communities must be organized by the state governments so it's to a, defend the facilities. It's a joint operation at that level between the state government and the federal should government. Be, should, should be. be. But right now, the federal government has excluded the state governments in policing the Niger Delta. So in all that you read about, nobody mentions the state governments. And the state governments on their own have not made it their duty to secure their areas. And that's why we're in a mess. So can, can Delta State, for instance, stand apart and says it doesn't know anything that happened in Forcados for nine years where crude oil was siphoned? So can the it, state it, governors... You see, you see, you see again... We're diverging attention. That criminality has to be properly traced and tracked to shell and the so-called international oil majors who have in their offices their laptops <laughs> where they monitor what goes on anywhere in the area of operation. So why do you keep on blaming our people? Oh, we're blaming the state government. Can the state government say it's not our Who owns the pipeline? Who owns the pipeline? It's like saying you have a car. Right? For running your business. And for nine years, you are not aware that the car has been abandoned. I beg your pardon. Our people should not be insulted. We should not be insulted. But then if, if, if we are laying it at the feet of the oil producing company, 
How about this? No, co with the connivance, with the connivance of military and political, you know, leader. You see, when you talk about when when, <laughs> when we hear stuff like uh, you know, is the military is the you know political leaders, it sounds rather vague. There are certain individuals for nine years, as we yes. all appointed. Yes. Huh? There are certain individuals yes. that have been assigned. Of course, and I'm pretty sure that there are records to who and who have you been see, assigned to of, where yeah. over the years. When we talk of political leader, we're talking of the establishment, the agencies that have been set up by the government, funded by the government to track and monitor those pipelines. But because they have abandoned their duties and because nobody is going to question them. So it's a case of a systematic dysfunctional state that we're operating. Whether or, not, whether or not it is orchestrated, Mr. Falana, is, is something that we should also interrogate. But we'll do that when we return from this break. Please do please. Well, uh, Mr. Femi Falano is still with us this morning. We we're talking about this whole cruel theft thing. First of all, let, let me, you know, as we continue this conversation, are you surprised? Are you shocked? Are you in any way baffled by the quantum of revelations that have happened over time? I ask that because the president and a sizable number of people over the years have said, I feel is being stolen and it's not once not twice not thrice that this has been said so that we are making these discoveries so so far you know the discoveries have been made now is this something that surprises you no not at all uh, I, I, def I defend uh, a number of communities in the niger delta against oil pollution at home and abroad so i'm not in any way taken aback and nobody in the niger delta is surprised and when you talk of discovery, I beg your pardon, I, I, I think it was Punch newspaper, uh, the editorial, that put it very, very well. He said that discovery it, it reminds one of uh, the discovery of Niver Niger, you know, <laughs> by some <laughs> colonialists. The communities, the local people have known the source of Niver Niger for ages, you know. So you can't say you are discovering. What is going on, you know, all this discovery? The great Rasmatas. It's meant to divert the attention of Nigerians from the sources of the crime. Or burning vessel and the, they are pretending now. Oh, we have just discovered. So that, oh, of, there are I was asking a question about what? about leaders earlier on. Yes. We've had a minister of petroleum for nine for eight years, who is Mr. President, yes. and this theft has gone on under his watch. What questions of accountability? No, the oil theft started 22 years ago. And every regime promised to deal with it. But what, que what questions should we be asking of Mr. President as the Minister no, of now, Petroleum? Now, this time around, we should be asking the Minister of Petroleum Resources to give explanation to Nigerians. Because our OPEC quota now is 1.8 million barrels per day. We are barely producing 900,000 barrels per day. And the GMD uh, 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 of NMPC went to the National Assembly a few days ago to say, oh, we are losing 600,000 barrels per day. Now, you are now just being, because the whole world has turned Nigeria into a board of jokes. Everybody, how can you have a government in place? Well, and this level of Oil theft is going on. So the government has now woken up to discover that there are pipelines that have been producing oil for nine years, exporting oil out of the country. So we have to do something about it now. Well, but we have not got to the root yet. So what, what, where would, be the, what would this root be for you? It's, we must identify, if you want to stop it once and for all, the government must identify, expose, name and shame all the companies and public officers that are involved in the oil theft. The companies are known. 
I know some of them by the nature of my work. A few years ago, we told the government, we did a study. The oil that left Nigeria and the church in one port in America, Philadelphia, is about 60.2 million liters, valued at 12.7 billion dollars. We how sent many, within three how many years. years. One pot, we sent a petition to the government, to the EFCC, a top official of the government. Don't investigate, don't mind them. In frustration, we had to sue in court. We're in court against Shell, against Total, against Chevron, against Ajib, and some shipping companies that colluded with them to take our oil illegally out of the country. One pot. There are other ports all over the world where our oil has been stolen and taken to. Now, if the government is committed today, the uh, question to suit, to trust the me, countries and ports where our oil has been taken to. In that it's suit, really... Senior Advocate, you've mentioned four oil companies. Yes. In that suit, yes. our government officials also named because th that uh, quantum of oil could not have been stolen without the connivance of some state government or no, no. federal we, government officials. No, we don't have the evidence. We deal with evidence as lawyers. But we have the evidence of those who took what out of Nigeria within a period of three years. Now, within those now, three the, years. now the detail of the government. But the government wasn't interested mm -hmm. to now say, how did this oil get out of Nigeria? Which is the question, raises the question of security officials. Because they were loaded somewhere. Which, is, which raises the question of security officials, uh, Mr. Kalani? No, there's no doubt about that. Nobody has denied the fact that security officials are involved. Nobody has denied that. But then in you... fact, that is why everybody wants, every military officer wants to serve in the Niger Delta. But you also... Like being a, a member of the task force. You released their statement recently concerning this, uh, the, the destruction of some, you know, uh, of the vessel, of oil, you know, vessel and yes, all of that. Yes. Now, the reason for that... I am I mean, asking that the chief of defense staff who came out publicly to defend her be brought, be asked to resign. No, no, no. Because we must start somewhere. We, I agree with you. But before we even get to that point, there must be some, because he went with the GMD of the NNPC yes. to, the, to the Niger Delta to look at some of these things, you know, that were, uh, you know, those points that we talked about. They went, whether for the photos or whatever it is, they went it's there. It's last matters. Okay, fine. However, shouldn't we be asking the military and whoever else, maybe all of them in the military, to answer questions. No, that's, who is who specifically that, should be answering this? That questions? is what I started yesterday. But as, let us start with the chief of defense staff that has come out publicly, General Rabo, Lucky Rabo, to say, yes, we have the right to burn the vessel. How? He said, under rules of engagement, under what section, under what paragraph of the rules of engagement. And I have come out to say. Under the Armed Forces Act, Section 111. 111. Burning a vessel, burning a ship, burning a building. It's a serious criminal offense. If the suspects are convicted, it's life imprisonment, no option of fine. So it's not something you can just poo poo. That, that, that's so a, that's we are the bound. section. Well, no. Mr. Palano, that's the section on the screen now for everyone to see. Yes. Section 111, subsection B yes. speaks specifically to uh, any vessel ship. Aircraft, railway track, or wagon, or vehicle, or thing, you know, that such a person is subjected to, it has committed an guilty of arson, uh, arson. and liable on conviction by a court martial to imprisonment for life. life. Yes, this that's is, by a, minute, a person under service law. That, so, that person will also be court martialed for by sure. the military. Yes, but that's what the law says. So what, what rules of engagement is the chief of defense staff quoting? No, you should be defend, asking him. There's nothing that, like that. that there's, there's no such provision action. in the rules of engagement. And the rules of engagement have to be read subject to the law. Oh, yes. So nobody has challenged the fact that this is the law. That any military officer, any military personnel that sets fire deliberately and willfully to a ship or a vessel is committed an offense. Because under the law, all those who were engaged, who were engaged in oil bunkering, you know, and hired the, or bought the vessel, have to be arrested and prosecuted. Then the court, only a court of law in Nigeria, 
can make an interim model of forfeiture of the vessel. If they are eventually convicted and the case is concluded, the court will make a permanent order, final order of forfeiture. No military officer, no political leader in Nigeria has the right to say, go and burn the vessel in the event. containing yes. stolen crude oil. Which, Nobody has the power in Nigeria. Which could be evidence. No, it's evidence. You know, that is destruction of evidence. Now, the, the, the and National sorry, Assembly... Sorry, it's another offense. It's another offense also. Destruction of evidence. Now, the, Scandalizing the military. It's another offense. Now, we, we have committees at the National Assembly charged with, you know, oversighting activities of the military such as this. And in no, fact... No. They don't oversight... No, no, no. The, National Assembly? No? National Assembly? No, no, no. No. They don't oversight these guys. They don't oversight them. By a lot of, I can tell you, error of, of omission or commission. Since 1999, a lot of committees have been set up by the Senate and the House of Reps. None of them, none of them has come up with any report that could address the problem. Once those committees are set up, the oil companies move there. Military officers and individuals who are involved in the criminal enterprise move there to unquote, lobby. The members of the committee, and at the end of the day, you know, they are. So you're not, ex you're not expecting that questions will be asked of the chief of defense staff by the relevant committees, you know, charged with oversighting the activities of the military, no, uh -uh. especially the setting ablaze of this vessel. No, of course, of course. No, the C chief of staff has, while insulting all of us, and nothing will happen. No, we can do it. We can do it. So, Mr. Fallon. And that, that is the end of the matter. Just to be but clear. it cannot be the end of Just the matter. Just to be clear, you said earlier that they don't oversight the military. No, no, no. But then you also said now that those questions, you agree with Bukola that those questions should be asked by the same committees. No, not the committee. Nigerian staff, you are asking, we're asking the questions now. The questions are beyond the followers of the National Assembly. But the committees should ask those questions on behalf no, of Nigerians. No, you see, you see, why we shouldn't waste that time? Even if the committee asks the questions, and they come out with a report, it will still have to go to the EFCC or the ICPC because the committees cannot implement their findings on that report. And that is why we should stop wasting the resources of the country. Okay. Where a crime has been dictated, you will send the petition to either the police or the anti graft agencies so that we don't waste money. Okay. Well, Mr. Falano, it, it will seem like there's some form of some kind of conundrum in all this conversation. The NNPC is a limited liability company, so to speak, now, right now. now. And the president is the Minister of Petroleum. He has a Minister of State for Petroleum. Yes. And uh, all these oil installations are owned by the state. And now NNPC is like the company that belongs to the state and all of that. So in tackling this crude oil theft, how, in your opinion, according to the laws, should it be addressed? The president is not happy with the oil theft. He has made that clear several times. And consequently, these revelations ought to help to address some of the issues that he's been raising over time. But then there is the issue of the NNPC Limited. So how, in your opinion, should this be addressed according to the laws? In the first place, the president has demonstrably lost confidence in the competence of the military to address this problem. Hence, a contract has been awarded to a non-state actor, Mr. Government Tempolo, aka Tempolo, who is said to be making these discoveries now. <laughs> you understand me? But that is self. It's an, a colossal embarrassment to a state that is supposed to be functional. That, oh, we have lost confidence in our armed forces and the police, particularly the Navy. We are now giving a contract to a private person, a private company, to help us. That's number one. Number two. So all the ordinarily, ordinarily, the service chiefs should simply have resigned. Mr. President, you have lost confidence in us. But since they have failed to resign, 
And we must start with the chief of defense that, that has come up publicly to justify criminality. Secondly, the president as the minister of petroleum resources and as a commander in chief of the armed forces will have to ensure that all those who are indicted in this act of oil theft are fired. It cannot be business as usual. Otherwise, it's going to continue. Three, the oil companies that are involved. Because those oil companies are so powerful. They are more powerful than the government. This time around, the federal government of Nigeria must show that we are in charge of this country. Mm. And therefore, go after the oil company. If the government wants information, it is out there. We are ready to assist. I've just told you of one case. Another one. A law was not implemented for 18 years. The Deep Offshore Inland Basin Act. I campaigned for four years. To get that law amended. And the oil companies, government officials, just ignored me. At a stage, we even drafted a bill for the amendment and sent to the National Assembly. I think the Senate, you know, a member of the Senate adopted it and it was discussed before. Uh, uh, they, they, because it was abandoned. Now, what happened? At the end of the day, three state government went to court. Rivers, Bayesa, and Akwaibo on that matter, and the Supreme Court said, go and collect the money, royalties for 18 years. The government discovered that what we have lost was $60 billion. Mm -hmm. The Attorney General wrote to the oil companies, thou shall pay. The Minister of, this Minister of State, in the Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mr. Silver, came out publicly. You can Google. Say so nobody can collect that kind of money. That's some of money. And that's where we are. Mr. Falana, let, let's look at it holistically. And I'm glad you mentioned earlier that you represent some of these... And we're going around borrowing money. ...oil-producing communities. And since these discoveries, quote-unquote, are being made, the post-com have, have come out to speak. And they're quoting Section 257, subsection 2 of the PIA Act. Yes. And they are saying that uh, government, you know, uh, copiously came up with this law, yes. uh, which states that any act of sabotage that occurs in their communities that affects this, that the affected communities would forfeit the actual payment accruable to them in the PIA. Do you agree with this? It's an community? illegal provision. You, because you, you agree that it's an illegal provision? It's an provision. illegal provision. You cannot punish me. You can't punish those communities for the criminality of the people we are trying to but, but then how, how <laughs> identify you, now. But then how do you tie it back to the discoveries of the River State Governor of so many legal refineries which could not have gone See? on without them tapping illegally into you, crude you know, oil? You know what happened? What happened is that it is the government that determines how law and order will be enforced in a country. If the communities discover and since, as, as it is the case in Nigeria, that the government is not committed to eradicating oil bunkering, if they discover that security personnel deployed in that area to check oil bunkering are deeply involved, what do you expect the communities to do? So that's what is going on. But please, let us get the communities properly involved. Let the government return to the rule of law. The government must without any further waste of time, inaugurate, reconstitute the Niger Delta Development Corporation, okay. which was contributing to tracking this uh, oil theft. But no. now, that body is not reconstituted. Oh, Mr. Falado, I, I, I'm wondering how we're going to take on the host communities without involving the states. That's a conversation that, ha that has to take up take, take, no, the states some have to subsequent oh, yes, I agree with on you. this world. I agree um, with you. You know, because it's a lot. And, of course, a, a You know why all this, not just the oil producing state, all the state governments in Nigeria. Exactly. Because we're losing so much, you can't get money from the federation account. Well, because the money meant for development of the country it's and unfortunately, it goes back to the same communities because they have to. Yes. We have to thank you very much thank this you. morning, uh, Mr. Femi Falon, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you very for your much. Uh, comments this morning. I truly appreciate it. Well, some comments coming from you. Mola has this one. Said the state governments and communities cannot police the pipelines which the federal government has taken from them. Return the oil to Niger Delta and see. Case for resource control. Really? And. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this one is from Olagunju Oladili and 
he or she, I, he, I believe, says there are institutions empowered to carry out different activities when dealing with crude oil. However, the ineffective cooperation between stakeholders is why we are here. Operational adaptability and synergy amongst all stakeholders is key to managing such cases. That's it for Walagunju. Educase says you will always struggle if you try to differentiate between shutdown and seal off. <laughs> However, I appeal to all political parties in Zamfara State to uphold the value and worth of human lives. Nothing can replace a human life. That's from Educase. Well, bottom line is if you struggle, you can't operate. So um, that's just what it is. But well, look at this from uh, Henry, talking about Zamfara political crisis, says, Whereas it's convenient to castigate the state government for arbitrarily shutting the media houses, truth be told, the PDP ought to have successfully challenged the state government order that suspended political activities in court before holding the rally, unless the governor is no longer the chief security officer of the state. Both have erred, but the situation has revealed Another gaping hole in our electionary management system. Let the relevant authority address this now, he says. Well, there you go. That wraps it up with uh, the program here today. We thank you all for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. I am Chamberlain, so have a good one. can't believe Monday has just started and Sunrise Daily is already over. Well, thank you so much for sticking with us this morning. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Yes, thank you also from this side of the divide for sharing your day with us. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. The week is just starting. Make the best of it for the country. Mayo Makinde, have a wonderful day.